Welcome to the Apex. I'm Zell, your host, and we're going to get right into sharp news. First up, from Knife Informer, we have the top 10 best multi-tools ever. I stuck that one in there because I just don't do multi-tools, and I'm sure many of you would like some information on them. And from BladeReviews.com, we have a review of the Zero Tolerance 055, another knife you're probably not going to see here unless one of you guys send it this way. And then, from the truth about knives, we've all been watching what's been going on in Vegas, but over in uh, Marseille, France, we've got a couple of women that have been stabbed. So... You know, don't let your focus get so intense on one place. But, moving on along, the other thing that I want to bring your attention to is the UK. You remember the Cookie Monster bins? You know, where you had, you're supposed to throw your knives in there? Well, they've been cracking down on knives. So now, what are they doing? Acid attacks. Why? Because it's easy to get a hold of at the hardware store, even at your local grocery. And, uh, well... You probably should read the article. It's uh, kind of grotesque and kind of sad. But for anybody out there that thinks we need more gun or knife control, uh, go read that, please. And then from Knife News, we have CRKT adding several new products to their catalog. Uh, I actually can't find them over at CRKT's catalog, online catalog. But Knife News has pictures of them. And it's uh, several new field strip technology knives with uh, some really interesting blade shapes. It's, uh, uh there's still that 4116 stainless, but uh, if they've got them priced right, they're pretty nice. And then, back to the sad again, going gear owner Marshall Hoots has passed away. I linked to the article over at Knife News. There's several people that have YouTube videos up about it. Uh, our condolences go out to the family here at the Zellrig channel, and Susie nails it. And now, uh, let's get out of the sad and move on to video. From DB Blaze, we have the his nicest friction folder yet. And he actually has that video, and he has a group of videos on his making of the friction folders. And if you guys have watched uh, Dub, I think his... I'm not sure. Dub, I think his name is, over there. Uh, Dom, that's it. He's got an interesting way of talking about things and doing things and showing you all the minute little processes it really takes to make a knife. Like right now, we've got a knife in the oven upstairs, tempering oven, that we'll be looking at here in a few minutes. There's a lot more to it than just grinding out a knife and tossing it out there for sale. And from Knife Guy, this is kind of cool. Several weeks ago, I sent Knife Guy... Three different steals from Wii because I wanted to get a independent <laughs> uh, opinion on them. Because, you know, I work with Wii and they kind of sponsor what I do here on YouTube. Not directly, but in a roundabout way. So I wanted someone who was not attached to Wii to give me their opinions on the steel and the sharpening. And Knife Guy went and did it. And oh my lord, guys, you've got to go watch the video just to see the, I believe it's a 606. I get the numbers mixed up. But the uh, S35VN knife he sharpened, and he sharpened a D2, an S35VN, and an M390 knife. And uh, gave his opinions on how they acted. And that S35VN knife he sharpened was one of those zero grind models. And oh my goodness, is it beautiful need to get over there and watch that just to see it. Find it on Instagram. Save the pictures. It's beautiful. And whenever those knives get back, we'll probably be giving away the D2 model in the coming weeks. Next up, from Simple Little Life, we have Viewer Knives, number 17. There's some cool ones in there you may want to see. And then, from the Apostle P, from the Sharpening Bench, Struggles and Solutions by Maximet Nightmare. If you are considering something in Maximet, I strongly suggest that you go see what Rob has to say about Maximet and about what he's figured out with it. Uh, I've heard so much about it that I don't know that Rob has hit it on the head, but he's sharpened more of them than the rest of us have, so I think you ought to go watch it if you're interested in that steel at all or your own some. Uh, 
And then from Kevin Cleary, we have the original fidget spinner, the CRKT Snap Lock. And uh, I bought one of those for my brother years ago, and it's not the greatest knife steel, it's not the best use knife, but oh my goodness is it cool. And then from Love Them Knives, we have the Wii 7-Eleven. Uh, that is the Blitz, for those of you that know the names. And I wanted you guys to get a full review of that because I've been slacking and didn't do it. And then from Cedric and Ada Gear and Outdoors, Pete has too much fail to be win. And that is the Y-Star Gen 01 knife review. Uh, if you remember the, from the rust tests, well, there you go. And then from Walter Sorrels, we have grinding tips for the knife maker. And this is actually belt, he's got grinder belt tips. It's actually belt grinder tips for the knife maker. And well, you know, maybe Walter meant it that way. Anyhow, uh, we're going to go through a heat treat process today, so if you're not interested in that at all, well, I suppose you're done, but are you? We've talked about heat treat a lot on this channel, so today let's do some. We have a 3 16 inch thick piece of 01 that has been ground into the shiver profile and been given a proper bevel. And, uh, well, it's time to heat treat it. So, let's get it done. First thing we're going to do is clean up the blade. Now, I'm going to use a little Windex so we can keep this all out in the shop. Normally, I would take them to the sink and uh, use some dish soap, just plain old dish soap. Because what we're really trying to do is get any excess oils off here because the excess oils can cause us problems. Uh, more scale formation. You might have a fire in your uh, heat treat oven, and you know we don't want that. It's supposed to be hot in there, but we're not supposed to have flames. And this is kind of a new experience. I haven't done any 01, so I'm going to bring up the Crucible instructions on 01, and we're going to follow them to a T. So there we go. Blades all cleaned up. We're we'll giving it a moment to dry. I'm going to go over to the laptop and look up and make sure I've got this correct on the heat treat. And off we'll go. All right, here we go. We have the even heat with the tap control. And we want to make a new schedule. Okay, so what we've got now is this guy should do exactly what we want for, for this. We light that up in red and we go get the piece and we stick it in there because, well, you kind of need the steel in there. It's pointless, right? Now, please note, I'm putting the steel in there. It's a cold oven. I don't need gloves. I don't need any of those things. Clean piece of steel is in there. We'll get the gloves and the tongs and all that fun stuff later. And now that it's in there, we hit start. And there we go. All right, we're gonna pull that knife out of there and go in for the quench. Actually, a pizza pan. 
right here and we're going to get this right into the tempering oven. And there we go, she's in the tempering oven. We are at 450 degrees, going to do our two hour countdown and we'll be back when the oven says it's done. We'll see what kind of results we got. Actually we'll clean up the knife first, then we'll see what kind of results we got. All right, guys, there she is as she come out of the oven. We're going to get her over on this. This is a surface conditioning belt. And the idea here is to just get the scale off of it. And once i got the scale off of it, I'll probably do a little bit of chamfering. But this blade is kind of a test mule. Uh, basically, I want to see how the O1 steel is going to perform. So we need to get it cleaned up and uh, chamfer it a little bit so it's comfortable to carry and I may or may not make a sheath for it. It may just get used around here in the shop to see how things go. Anyhow, let's get the camera adjusted for you guys and we'll get to it. That scale is a little rougher than anticipated. We're gonna move to a little meaner surface conditioning belt. There we go. It's not perfect right now, but uh, a little bit more clean up and we're good to go. But we've got all of our champers in. Uh, I'm going to do some stuff off camera and we'll get one last look at it. All right, guys, it's decided to rain around here. So that's the noise in the background, but that's kind of where we ended up. And that's actually a beautiful thing because if I send these out for coating, this is perfect all i need to do is blast it didn't take very long to get it back to here and that is just a beautiful beautiful thing makes things quicker for me easier for you and saves a little bit of time as far as the steel goes here's what i can tell you about the steel i like the feel of this o1 against the belts a lot better than I did the 1095 after it was hardened. It's uh, definitely got more wear resistance and it's probably harder. So the 01, moved 01, I think is gonna be a good thing for all of us. I'm gonna sharpen this guy up, put it to the test and I'll give you guys an update uh, you know, in a week or two. Anyhow, appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.